Okay, so the next problem is the highly divisible triangular number. And it looks like this. So the f first thing it says is that the sequence of triangle numbers is generated by adding the natural numbers. So the seventh one would be 1 plus 2 plus 3 all the way up to plus 7 to get 28 like this. So we start off with 1 being just 0 plus 1, then 0 plus 1 plus 2, 0 plus 1 plus 3, 0 plus 1 plus 2. Sorry, 0 plus 1 plus 2 plus 3, 0 plus 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4, and so on. So we have the first uh, seven triangular numbers right here, and we can see the factors written out like here. So remember, factors are numbers basically where if you divide the number by that factor, um, there'll be a remainder of 0. So we can see that 10 divides by 2, 5, 10, and 1 to, with no remainder. And if we look at 28, it says. 20 is the first triangle number to have over five divisors. And it says here, what is the value of the first triangle number to have over n divisors? So we'll take in this number n right here. So let's implement this now. So we'll say let a divisible triangle number equals n. So this is our function right here. And in terms of testing, we could just do console.log something like uh, result is and uh, we're going to do divisible triangle number and let's start off with um, 23 because that's quite high but we do know its answer. So the first thing we want to do is basically uh, generate uh, our triangle numbers and this is going to be a very simple way to do that so you'll see how this works just by looking at the code. So we'll start off with the first triangular number and um, even though it's not shown here, it, I guess it's zero, a zeroth triangular number. And we'll have a variable called count, which just keeps track of the number of triangular numbers that we've generated. And then we'll just have an infinite while loop here, and we'll say while true. And um, normally this is not recommended, but it's okay in this context, I guess. And we'll have count equals count plus... Uh, one so in each iteration will increase count to so the count will show the iteration of the while loop that's running and then we'll say current triangular equals current triangular plus uh, count like this so in our first iteration we'll have count going up from zero to one then we'll have current triangular equals zero plus one which is one then in our second iterations we'll have count going up to two and then we'll have current triangular equals uh, the, pre the the current triangle which was 1 plus 2 which gives us 3 and so on. So with each iteration of this while loop we'll generate a new triangle number. So the next thing to do is basically uh, count the number of divisors of factors that it has and uh, the trivial way or the naive way to do this is to basically just uh, divide it by every number between uh, I guess uh, 2 and itself or 1 and itself and basically just count up the number of devices it has. The problem with this is as the numbers get larger and larger, um, this becomes very complex and it takes a lot of iterations and it, some problems you can take like over an hour to solve. So if we look at these factors, one thing we can notice here is that um, if I were to do the square root of 28, so if I did 28 to the power of a half like this, that comes up to be 5.29 whatever. And if we look at these factors that 28 has, we can see that for each pair of factors, one is below the square root and one is above the square root. So one is below the square root, 28 is above the square root. One is be Two is below the square root, 14 is above the square root. Four is below the square root, seven is above the square root and so on. So we have these factor pairs where one is above and one is below the square root. So we can take this, use this to our advantage because all we have to do is try dividing by the numbers between uh, one and the square root. And we know that uh, for each of the factors that we find there, uh, we know that there's also another one um, above the square root. So we can just increment the count by two. And the reason why this is a lot quicker is because as the numbers get larger and larger and the square root in proportion gets smaller and smaller because remember you're dividing by a larger number each each time so um, basically as our algorithm as the number that we take in scales up and up and up and um, this problem will not scale up anywhere near as much so uh, what we can do here is firstly we'll have a variable that counts a number of devices and I'm gonna call this device account and I'm gonna set that to zero then we'll have a variable I and what we'll essentially do here is say for um, i equals 1, 
i is less than, and then we can do the square root of the current triangular. So the way you can do that is math dot square root current triangular. And we can say uh, in each iteration, just increase i by one. And what we'll say here is if um, current triangular percentage i. So if we divide it by i and the remainder is equal to zero, then this means that we found a factor. And in instead of increasing the device account by one, will increase the device account by two. Because remember, like I said, for each factor that we find beneath the square root, there's also one above the square root. And one last thing we need to consider here is if we, I know it isn't, but if nine was a triangular number, for example, um, the square root itself will also be a factor and we only go up to below the square root here. So we also wanna make sure that we factor that in as well. So we can say if a number dot is integer math dot square root current triangular so this just checks if the square root of the current triangular number is an integer and that means that it is a factor then we just want to make sure that we increase the device account by one like this okay so then we could do something like just a log statement, just to say this. Um, again, this is optional, so I can say something like generated a triangle, um, triangular, and then print the current triangular plus, and then width, and then print the number of devices. And then I can say something like devices, like this. Again, this is totally optional. Um, it just basically just to see the progress that we're at because some of these might take a little bit of time. And the final thing to do here is say if the device account or the number of devices for that triangular number is greater than n, um, like the problem asks right here, then we just want to return the current triangular. So that should be everything we need to do here. So for 23, the answer should have been 630. So if we run this, we can see that we get 630. Um, then for 167, it should be something like 168 something. So let's try that. Yeah, one, th sorry, 1385. And then 374. And that should be equal to, um, I think that's 17 million something. So let's try that. Yep, yeah, 17 million something. And we should have for 500, it should be equal to um, 76 million or something like that. So this is why I said we have to use a square root method because um, if we were trying to divide all the numbers between one and that, uh, it would take absolutely ages. So even this one you can see takes a while, but we do have our answer right there. So we have a working solution now. So again, I'll just refresh what it does. So we have a while loop that basically on each iteration generates a new triangular number. Then we'll set have a variable called device account which counts the number of devices and we'll default that to zero. We'll try dividing the number by all numbers between one and its square root. And if it divides successfully, we'll increase the device account by two. Because if there's a factor below the square root, we know that there's also a factor above the square root. Then if the square root itself is is um a whole number that means it's one of the factors so we'll increase the device account again by one then if the device account is greater than n which is the value we took in then we'll just return that number right there so this is pretty simple this one so we can go ahead and um, submit our solution uh, in terms of the official problem it wanted it for uh, five uh, hundred devices so let's just copy this and submit this to be marked so I copy that, submit that, and then let's submit our function right here. So let's copy that and paste that into here. Um, again, you'll get a warning, uh, I think, about the um, about uh, infinite while loops. So we might have to, yeah, although I don't think that's a problem here. Um, I think it's probably because I failed to initialize a variable or something like that. Maybe if I get rid of these uh, log statements, it might run a bit quicker. Wow. 
Wow, it's really slowing down. And we can see that after ages, it has finally accepted our solution. So our function is correct, and we can go ahead and submit that. And in terms of the official problem, yep, we can see that we submitted the right answer right there. So that's problem 12 completed.